All right, I do want to take you back to those heat days because there is some breaking news involving your old coach, current Miami team president, Pat Riley. Last week, Pat Riley said this on the Dan Levitard show. It was about LeBron James, quote, I would leave a key under the doormat if he would call me and let me know that he's coming, Riley said. This is, of course, to the idea that LeBron might ever return and finish his career with the Heat the way you did, Dwayne. Quote, I would do that, but I doubt very much that key. He said that key is rusted now. I wish him nothing but the best, and if he ever wanted to come back, I will put a new shiny key under the mat. Now, that quote just earned him today a $25,000 <laughs> fine from the Heat, I mean, from the NBA. I'm sure Pat's good for it, or Mickey Harrison is good for it, but Chris, what do you think Pat was trying to accomplish there? I mean, you know, usually you're used to uh, competing at championship time, and um, you know, if you're not, if you know the Heat, they're thinking about the next move and things mm -hmm. to get better. And yeah, we're living in that world of uh, tampering. I, I, I'm pretty sure he meant things tongue in cheek, just a bit, mm -hmm. maybe a little serious, but <laughs> you know, um, uh, that's what happens. You want to be playing right now. Um, you you want to be in in the mix, in the fight, competing for uh, an NBA championship, and to not have that. Uh, you know, I'm sure he starts going back down memory lane and just thinking of different scenarios and then he can say what he wants to say. And, <laughs> and you know, unfortunately, there's tampering rules for that. But I mean, it's just something that's out there now and we'll see. We'll see um, if the key analogy keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, D? Well, Pat Riley got 25,000 in dress socks. Right. <laughs> but uh, just, you know, to stay away from uh, the Utah Jazz getting a fine, oh. I, uh, I would just say that, uh, that Pat Riley is doing Pat Riley things. Okay. All right. <laughs> we can talk about Miami. And, and Dwayne, I understand you have to talk about this again in the larger sense because of your jazz relationship. But look, your relationship isn't just with Miami. You have had a long relationship with Jimmy Butler. This year ended earlier than they expected after that finals appearance in the bubble last October. What do you think he or the Heat need to do to get back among the contenders in 2021? But like Chris said, I mean, the Heat is always going to do what they've always done. You know, they always plan in steps ahead to try to, uh, to look at the future and see how they can compete for championships. The Miami is all about championships. Um, you know, you can take the years that you don't win championships and say, man, we had a great season. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't a year that Pat Riley and the organization uh, <laughs> really, really want to remember. They want to remember the ones that end in parade. And so... They're going to do everything possible to do that. As long as Pat Riley and the Harrison family is at the helm of that organization, they're always going to go all in. They're going to pull those chips in when, when it's right. They're not going to do it when it ain't right. When it's right, they're going to put all the chips in. Hmm. Chris, what do you think? Oh, no, it's pretty much the same. Um, it's a reason that that organization is where it is to this day. And just like the Wayne said, give credit to the Harrison family, the Riley family for their work, their vision, and really just the belief that they put in like it's an organizational thing you believe you can win you can actually do it um and that's what it's all about so we know that they're going to be aggressive in any situation they can but like Dwayne said again only when it's right and sometimes when it's right is really right and <laughs> and, and and you know they'll be right back in the mix well we saw that last year we saw that with the two of you in fact during the break when we were all like lining up on the screen here Dwayne was like, Chris, this feels like 2010 when we were announcing <laughs> who was going to the Heat. I got to ask you back about that, guys. Look, I mean, w when you guys were back and you ended up, of course, in LeBron with Miami, before you got there, there was the chance that you both might have gone to Chicago. So we've talked plenty about the Heat <laughs> side of things. But I want to dig back to the Chicago side of things. What do you think would have happened if you guys had decided in the end to all be Bulls together instead of Miami players together. Look, well, I will Chris, say, you, know, you want to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I will say this. You think you have things made up in your mind, right? But when I went into the to the pitch with Chicago, woo, it was it was an excellent pitch. Mm -hmm. It was a really really good pitch. And I didn't know I was going to feel the way I was going to feel, right? That was in the house that Jordan built. Mm -hmm. So I'm just. 
it's, it's it was all there and like I, I tell people all the time that was the pressure that they were putting on me so they said if you come Dwayne or LeBron is going to come <laughs> so you need to make a decision that was my pressure and then and they would put like you know me Dwayne D Rose Lou All Dang Joe Kim no that's a pretty good team you yeah know? it's and, okay um, it, it was it was just one of those psychological things that the that the teams was um throwing out there in Chicago was no different. Yeah, man, to add to that, here's the thing. <laughs> the the Bulls, the Knicks, uh every team that was in the in the in the in the runnings in 2010 could only bring in two star players. And so in Chicago, it was gonna be a race to either Chris and me or Chris and LeBron. It just, it wasn't gonna be all three of us. Uh, okay. So Miami mm-hmm. was the only team that, that, that made sure to put themselves in a position that all three of us can come in. And even though we had to take less money, there was no other place that, that had the, the room for all three of us. And, you know, me and Brian looked at it as well. We love to play together, but him and I together was not going to, you know, result into the championship we wanted. We knew we needed Chris Bosh, and uh, we decided not to settle for just two of us. Uh, all of us decided to just settle for all three of us. Now, as you say that, there are loud cries coming from Chicago of people saying, we would have cleared the roster for all three of you. I know that's what people in Chicago were thinking, but history went the way it went. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.